What is going on YouTube? This is Lamont at Large. I am here with my special guest, Treasure Troller. We are at a gas station approaching on Sternberg Road in Muskegon, Michigan. We're here to talk about a very horrific crime that took place here on April 26, 2013. I'm gonna let Treasure Troller explain to you what took place on that horrible day. Well, this is the abduction site of Jessica Herringa. She was a attendant or a worker at this gas station. And Jeffrey Willits frequently visited this spot to probably see Jessica. But that night he parked his car or parked his van behind the gas station and he He went into the gas station using this gray door right here. And he went into the gas station and he abducted Miss Herringa and took her back to his grandfather's house. So we're gonna go we're gonna go to the actual house and kind of talk a little bit more in depth about the story and what took place on that night okay so we are following the path of where mr. Willis kidnapped Jessica and had her abducted in his van and was driving to his grandfather's house now first his, his grandfather had passed away so it was Part of the will so I, it's not like anybody was living at this house but it's a house on Bailey Street it's approximately a five minute drive from the abduction site and the house is located on Bailey Street so she was taken back here down into the basement where she was raped and tortured and Jeffrey called his cousin up to come over. His name was Kevin Bloom. And this, um, this individual, Mr. Willits, had made a comment to his cousin that he had got himself some pussy. And Jessica was laying dead on the floor. And Mr. Willits assisted, or I'm sorry, Mr. Bloom assisted Mr. Willits it was the house there we'll turn around here yeah we'll turn around and show you the house so. he is assisted him in removing Jessica's body and taking her to the burial location so we'll kind of stop there and we'll just turn around and get off and, and before we turn around and show the house it, it all I could think about is quite possibly how quiet it would be at night in this area and this lady screaming for her life and nobody heard her scream well she was probably from all accounts she was pistol pistol whipped at the gas station so she might have been unconscious or barely conscious when she was brought back here but it's, and if we could stop really quick so that is the house yeah, where the it took house place there. right there that is the and it looks a lot nicer than it did in the yeah they painted it so yeah a lot of trash has been picked up yeah there's so we're gonna go to the area of where they tried to hide the body. Okay, so currently we are off of Sheridan Road. Um, if you notice, there's some power lines here. Uh, this used to be a railroad back in the day and it's been converted into a walk path slash bike path. And so Treasure Troller, tell everybody why we're here. Well, according to the police report, Kevin Willis and uh, his cousin brought Jessica Herringa's body from his grandfather's house out here off the bike path or the power line path and buried her body. And when 
Kevin brought police back to the burial location, uh, they couldn't find the body. It, it's alleged that uh, Kevin had came back, or I'm sorry, Jeffrey had came back and dug the body back up and, 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 and moved it. And moved it. Yeah. And this crime has occurred over six years ago until this very day her body has not turned up and what amazes me is uh, maybe you can call it what you want me watching too many crime tv shows but you would think within that amount of time somebody uh, hiking around kids playing around a dog digging up holes you would have think something would have came up but her body has never been found and you were saying how possibly, because he lived within about maybe a mile or so of here. Yeah, that's that's what's kind of creepy to me because this whole this whole scenario from from the from the abduction scene to here is five to the abduction scene to his fa- grandfather's house is five minutes. Yeah, everything is very close together. And with the well, with one exception to one thing, which is sort of weird, but. It's very, and so it's it's all like this, the Herringa case is all within a, a very small area, and Jeffrey Willis lives just a couple of miles. His house that he lived in with his wife is just a couple miles from here. His cousin that assisted him worked at, at a prison, which is uh, basically next door to this. It's It's just very creepy to me that they were so close. Um, the Rebecca Bletch murder, I think, was was a crime of opportunity based on stalking. But the the final attempted abduction that got Jeffrey Willis caught is just so far out of character from what happened in the first two murders, where Jessica and Rebecca were basically stalked, and this girl was walking back from a home from a party out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of the country, and, and how Jeffrey came upon her had got to be like this girl's 100 million to one odds in yeah. the worst way. And, uh, you know, she jumped out of his van, and they happened what, what sort of really, not only could she identify him, but there was a far, a blueberry farm out there that was set up with surveillance cameras and they actually got a picture of his van in the area but that one was so out of character from what had happened in the previous two yeah we're we're actually we're going to go take a trip uh to the site of his uh, second victim's uh attempted kidnapping and murder so we're going to get going right here Okay, so I'm going to let Treasure Troller here explain to you exactly where we are and what we're looking at here right now. Well, we are on Automobile Road, which is in the North Muskegon area. And we're at the site of the second victim of Kevin Willis, and her name was Rebecca Bletch. And Jeffrey Willis met her allegedly through his cousin's kids, the summer soccer, summer sports. And he he would attend the cousin's, their, his uh, niece or nephew sporting events. She was there. That's how he became acquainted with her. And it's theorized that he kind of stalked her and found her routine. And on the day that she was murdered, she was jogging down this road. And he stopped by her. And he tried to get her in his van. And he was going to use a, a rope, a, a lasso, on her and try to get it around her neck. And somehow the noose or the lasso, the noose, fell farther down her neck and down below her knees. And so she took off running, and he pulled out a pistol, and the first shot hit Rebecca in the head. And according to the coroner, the first shot, she died instantly. But he came over, 
and shot her two or three more times. It wasn't for a few hours later before a passerby had found her body, but this is the the murder site of Mr. Willis's second victim, a young mother, Rebecca Bletch. And as you were telling me before, she was not buried, she was cremated. So this, in a sense, is the place where people might go to remember her. Yeah, his, two vi- his two victims, Jessica and Rebecca. Of course, Jessica's body has not been found, and Rebecca's remains were cremated. Your silence killed Kevin Bloom. Your silence was the re- cause and result of Rebecca Bletch's murder. You had well over a year to contact authorities and tell them what that sick, sadistic monster did to Jessica Herringa, and you refused to do so. You allowed this predator, you allowed this human scumbag to hunt, track down, and murder that poor girl. There is a Facebook page dedicated to people remembering Rebecca Blesh's murder. It'll be in the link in the description box below. Please, if you feel the need, please visit the page and leave your condolences. Kevin Bloom only received a few years in jail. He is already free. He is a free man. He is free to go about and do as he pleases. While those two women are forever gone, and who knows what happens when we die, but they are forever taken from this earth. Jeffrey Willis is currently serving two life sentences in the prison here in Michigan. A horrible, horrible, tragic story. And at the end of the day, just sadness abounds. Me just trying to tell the victims of crime their stories, I try to do the best I can. Uh, Hopefully I did okay, I don't know. Uh, Anyways, I am Lamont at Large. I am in Muskegon, Michigan. And uh, thank you for watching my video. Much appreciated. Peace out.